In this video, I'll be reviewing and testing the Canon EOS RP mirrorless full frame camera. At first glance, the EOS RP looks very familiar to anyone who's used a Canon Rebel DSLR. It has a nice deep grip, handles very well, and is very well balanced even when shooting with one hand. It's also a fairly compact camera, weighing in at a paltry 440 grams for just the body. In fact, just to give you a sense of how compact this camera is, you can see that it's almost as compact as my trusty Canon Rebel SL2, which in itself is a very compact DSLR. This makes it great as a travel camera, especially if you're coming from a bulkier full frame DSLR. The build quality is also very reminiscent of Canon DSLRs with their rugged plastic bodies. The unit isn't weather sealed like more expensive Canon bodies, but will definitely hold up to use in the field. Where it differs from Rebel DSLRs is its sensor. The EOS RP has a 26 megapixel full frame sensor which is almost identical to the sensor on the bulkier Canon 6D Mark II. The button layout on top will also be very familiar to Canon users. It's really intuitive and all the buttons are placed very thoughtfully. There is a standard Canon hot shoe mount but they've skipped the pop-up flash you would find on a regular DSLR. Very few people actually use those flashes so you're really not missing much. The button layout on the rear face is no different. Everything is very recognizable and well spaced. The camera has a 3 inch articulating screen which can be tilted and flipped to almost any orientation. Great for vloggers or those extremely unique folks who need the occasional selfie with a professional camera. The screen performs well even in the bright sunlight. In typical Canon fashion the menus and options are very cleanly laid out and the touchscreen is really as good as it gets when it comes to camera touchscreens. The most the most unique thing on the back is the electronic viewfinder, which unlike the optical viewfinders on DSLRs, can accurately help you preview both exposure and focus when taking a shot. The EOS RP uses a LPE17 battery pack, which is again borrowed from its Rebel line of DSLRs, like my SL2. The battery lives in this compartment on the bottom. This compartment also houses the SD card slot. On a camera at this price point, I would really have liked to see an SD card slot located on the side of the camera instead of on the bottom. This would really make the camera more user friendly and rather unsurprisingly the RP also has a quarter 20 tripod thread on the bottom. The camera also has a 3.5 millimeter mic jack and a 3.5 millimeter headphone port on the left hand side. On that surface you'll also find a remote port, an HDMI port and a USB type C port. So the big question though is how does it perform? While there are several really good RF lenses which can be used with this camera and several EF and EFS lenses that can be used with an adapter. I'm going to perform all my tests using the 24 to 105 millimeter RF kit lens that comes bundled with this camera. And spoiler alert, this is a really good beginner lens, especially when you buy it kitted with this camera. I'll leave a link to that kit below. When it comes to photos, it takes images as large as 26 megapixels megapixels and stores them in either JPEG, RAW or both JPEG and RAW formats at the same time. Now the image quality from this camera even with the kit lens is simply breathtaking. The images are sharp, the bokeh is nice and soft and it just produces photos with that characteristically professional looking full frame aesthetic. And what I love the most about Canon cameras is the colors. They might not be a hundred percent accurate but they're by far the most pleasing. And another thing I loved was the speed and reliability of the dual pixel autofocus for still images. It just made the process of taking pictures very enjoyable. And thanks to the size of the full frame sensor, low light shots are also very impressive and there's very little grain even at higher ISO settings. Definitely an advantage over an APS-C sized DSLR. When it comes to video, the camera can shoot video in 4K at 24 FPS, full HD at 60, 24 and 30 FPS and 720p at 60 and 30 FPS. Now while it does shoot 4K and the 4K is decent as you can see in these shots, I do not 
not recommend using this camera to shoot 4K for two reasons. Number one, the weird tight crop. So when you flip the camera over into shooting in 4K, you'll suddenly notice that there's a very tight crop applied to the frame. This is because in 4K mode, the camera doesn't use the entire full frame sensor. This is both inconvenient and just defeats the point of having a full frame sensor. What's even more infuriating, which is point number two, is that Canon has disabled the dual pixel autofocus when you shoot in 4K, so you pretty much have almost close to no usable autofocus when shooting in 4K. You can still use manual focus if pulling focus is your thing. This is simply unacceptable in my opinion. Canon disabled the 4K video in this camera just so people would upgrade to the Canon EOS R, and it's a real shame that they did that. However, if you're comfortable shooting in full HD, the quality of footage is absolutely outstanding. As you can see here, the colors are amazingly well reproduced, everything is nice and sharp, and it produces footage with that characteristic full frame aesthetic. But this is 2022 and no camera should be limited to full HD. This is an age where even budget smartphones shoot really good quality 4K video. Canon has absolutely no excuse for crippling the 4K on this camera. So should you buy the Canon EOS RP? Well, that all depends. If you're a person who's planning to upgrade from an APS-C DSLR and only plans on taking photos and is fine with full HD video, the EOS RP is still a great deal. It's one of the least expensive full frame options out there and especially with the 24 to 105 millimeter kit lens is a great beginner full frame camera for photography. The photos are crisp, have soft bokeh and the colors are just stunning. I'll leave a link to that kit below. Another situation in which the EOS RP will work well is if you're a filmmaker on a budget and you're comfortable pulling focus manually in 4K mode, you can extract some really good footage with the right technique and good quality EF lenses. You can get just the camera body and use it with EF lenses with the RF adapter. I'll leave a link to the RF to EF lens adapter below in case you're looking to buy one. However, if you're a person who is primarily looking to shoot 4K video but needs good autofocus, I recommend investing a little more and getting the Panasonic S5. The S5 has all the useful features of the EOS RP, like a fully articulating screen, and produces extremely sharp 4K with the ability to even record 10-bit 422 internally. It's well worth the additional investment. I'll also leave a link to that camera below in case you're looking to buy one. And if you own any one of these cameras, I'd love to know what your experience has been, so leave me a comment below. I hope this video has been useful. If it has, please hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more reviews, unboxings and setup videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.